Mrs. Bunker back to read some more of the second Magic Tree House um, series books. This one is called The Night at Dawn um, by Mary Pope Osborne. And if you missed the first two chapters, just click the Star YouTube channel link below, um, get caught up, and then come on back here for these chapters. So chapter three, Across the Bridge. Annie was under the tree, looking across the foggy ground. The knight's riding toward that bridge, I think, said Annie. The bridge goes to the castle. Wait, I'll look it up, said Jack. Give me the flashlight. He took the flashlight from Annie and pulled the castle book out of his pack. He opened it to the page with a leather bookmark. He read the words under the picture of the knight. This knight, or this is a knight arriving for a castle feast. Knights wore armor when they traveled long and dangerous distances. Armor was very heavy. A tournament helmet could weigh up to 40 pounds. Wow, Jack had weighed 40 pounds when he was five. It would be like riding a horse with a five-year-old on your head, he thought. Jack pulled out his notebook. He wanted to take notes, as he'd done on their dinosaur trip. He wrote, heavy head. What else? He turned the pages of the castle book. He found a picture that showed the whole castle and the buildings around it. The knight's crossing the bridge, said Annie. He's going through the gate. He's gone. Jack studied the bridge in the picture. He read, a drawbridge crossed the moat. The moat was filled with water to help protect the castle from enemies. Some people believed crocodiles were kept in the moat. Jack wrote in his notebook, crocodiles in moat? Look, said Annie, peering through the mist. A windmill right over there. Yeah, there's a windmill in here, too, said Jack, pointing at the picture. Look at the real one, Jack, said Annie, not the one in the book. A piercing shriek split the air. Yikes, said Annie. It sounded like it came from that little house over there, she pointed through the fog. There's a little house here, said Jack, studying the picture. He turned the page and read. The hawk house was in the inner ward of the castle, or inner ward of the castle. Hawks were trained to hunt other birds and small animals. Jack wrote in his notebook, hawks in the hawk house. We must be in the inner ward, said Jack. Listen, whispered Annie. Do you hear that? Drums, horns, they're coming from the castle. Let's go see. Wait, said Jack. He turned more pages of the book. I want to see what's really going on, Jack. Not what's in the book, said Annie. But look at this, said Jack. He pointed to a picture of a big party. Men were standing by the door playing drums and horns. He read, feasts were held in the great hall. Fanfares were played to announce different dishes in the feast. You can look at the book. I'm going to the real feast, said Annie. Wait, said Jack, studying the picture. It showed boys his age carrying trays of food. On the trays were peacocks with their with all their feathers, whole pigs, and pies. Peacocks, Jack thought. He wrote, they eat peacocks. Jack held up the book to show Annie. Look, I think they eat. Where was she? Jack looked through the fog. He heard the real drums and the real horns. He saw the real hawk house, the real windmill, the real moat. He saw Annie dashing across the real drawbridge. Then she vanished through the gate leading to the castle. Chapter 4, Into the Castle Oh, brother, muttered Jack. He threw his stuff into his pack and moved toward the drawbridge. He hoped no one would see him. It was getting darker. When Jack got to the bridge, he started across. The wooden planks under his feet. He peered over the edge of the bridge. Are there any crocodiles in the moat, he wondered. He couldn't tell. Halt, someone shouted. A guard on top of the castle wall looked down. Jack dashed across the bridge. He ran through the castle gate and into the courtyard. He heard the sounds of music, shouting, and laughter. Jack hurried to a dark corner and crouched down. He shivered as he looked for Annie. Torches lit the high wall Around the courtyard, the courtyard was nearly empty. Two boys led horses that clapped over the gray cobblestones. 
One of them was the knight's black horse. Jack! Jack peered into the darkness. There was Annie. She was hiding behind a well in the center of the courtyard. She waved at him. Jack waved back. He waited until the boys and horses disappeared inside the stable. Then he dashed to the, to the well. I'm going to find the music, whispered Annie. Are you coming? Okay, Jack said with a sigh. They tiptoed together across the cobblestones. Then they slipped through the entrance of the castle. Laughter and music came from a bright room in front of them. They stood at the doorway and peeked in. The feast in the great hall, whispered Jack. That he held his breath and stared in awe. A giant fireplace blazed at one end of the noisy room. Antlers and rugs hung on the stone walls. Flowers covered the floor. People in bright clothes and funny hats strolled among the crowd. Some played oddly shaped guitars. Some juggled balls in the air. Some balanced swords on their hands. Boys in short dresses carried huge trays of food. Dogs were fighting over bones under the tables. Men and women dressed in capes and furs sat at long, crowded wooden tables. I wonder which one is the knight, said Jack. I don't know, whispered Annie, but look, they're all eating with their fingers. Halt, someone shouted behind them. Jack whirled around. A man carrying a tray of pies was standing a few feet away. Who art thou? he asked angrily. Jack, squealed Jack. Annie, squealed Annie. Then they ran as fast as they could down a dimly lit hallway. I hope you enjoyed the next two chapters. I can't wait to see what happens next. I will read some more as soon as I can. Thanks.